right, what is growing on? So I smell compost and bringing you guys a follow up here at Jim's house and everybody's always saying Jim works too hard. Jim needs to take a break. Well, Jim just got back from Maine, so he did take a week off. And I say off, he went up to Maine, he was up there harvesting maple syrup and probably working the entire time he was there, but he did get away from the farm for a little bit and now he's back. So who's ready to see what's growing on? What's ripening around here? I can tell you I was just on the back porch and I saw a ton of tomatoes. See, Jim's got big red out here. That's where that compost smell is coming from. And I see the scoop shovel and the pitchfork. And I am noticing a ton of fresh compost all the way around the outside of that bed. Some things are definitely going to bolt and I'm sure Jim is getting ready to cover crop and put in some sweet potatoes. But we are still flourishing. One thing I really took notice to was all of the sunflowers over there are really starting to go off. And I think Mr. Jim is probably inside eating dinner. So we're gonna walk around here and get you guys some B-roll, maybe put that drone up and then we'll get Jim out for a few and see what's happening. All right, Jim, getting towards the end of season. It's the ugly time in the garden. People still think it looks pretty, but um, I think it looks a little ragged, but there's still a lot of food out here, um, but definitely time to start thinking for Maine. Um, getting stuff out, probably two more markets left, uh, two more pick of the gardens. I might open it up to like bring $20 and take whatever you want in the third week of April. We'll see if that works out, but um, that's a thought. But the flowers have been doing really good. If you look around, they're just gorgeous. You know, and I did think I had, I'm just getting better and better every year at plugging things in spaces. Because normally I wouldn't have planted any more of this. I would already be down there and this would be just waiting for sweet potatoes. But I ran, you know, the scallions, um, the daikons, snow apples, a bunch of flowers, more bok choy, a bunch more flowers. All that just added to the, you know, income stream this last month. Um, so that's been... I think I can still like update maybe another third again as much production, you know, and there was a lot. I, there had to be at least, just based on money, I'm thinking it was like, you know, 15,000 pounds of food coming out of here. You know, and, and that's talking lettuce, which don't weigh much. <laughs> it adds up, wow. Yeah, and you know, kale bunches, you know, because I don't do a lot of potatoes or anything that adds up in weight wise, so it's volume. And I think I could ramp it up too. Um, I'm gonna try. Going bigger next year? No, again, the thing is, you know, I'm really seeing what's so cool is instead of looking to expand, looking to grow better in the space you have. I mean, that's what the land will teach you if you're um, on it and vigilant. It's amazing the information it'll send you if you're here. That's one thing I really value about the hand watering. Because I'm here in that space where you're kind of zoning, you know, and you get these ideas like, oh, yeah, I should be doing that. You know, and that's an intangible, you really can't, you know, efficiency blows that away. Cause you, you know, you're getting it done as fast as you can. You don't have that time to get these ideas. So you just got back from a little trip. Yeah, it was great. I got up to Maine, uh, like six days, uh, beautiful weather. So I was able to open the greenhouses, took some onions up there, planted those, got some soil blocks started, got to see my little girl bought three hives of bees that we'll be putting uh, packages in first week of may so we'll have bees i might even bring one hive back down here we'll see if i get the trailer going yeah it was a great trip it kind of broke it up and i only missed one market any syrup yeah we did it's a little slower she's still doing it though um i think she had when i left she had done like nine gallons and i think she's you know last year she did 13 but she's still doing it so she'll probably end up with 10 or 11 anyway Wow. Yeah, it was great. Did I hear you just had your best day yet here? Yeah, last Tuesday. You know, I went to Tasty Tuesday and did like 600 there. And then I came back here, had like, I don't know, 15 people signed up for the pick of the garden. And then a couple others showed up and I had an extra and it ended up being four. So it was $1,000 in one day. It's not a bad day. I think that was me. a record. Record, yeah. Oh. All right, so I'm happy to hear you got away. How many more weeks are you going to be here? You know, it won't be more. Four will be the max. So I'm already did my first load of mulch today, threw the black eyed peas down first and threw that mulch over the top, watered it in. Oh, and I planted all my turmeric too, so that's already in. Um, did the same thing, I'm gonna put the black eyed peas and see if they, the turmeric will come up through them, maybe shade it a little. And then I went ahead and 
I've never done this, but I put a irrigation with a timer on that one. So I'm going to see if I can ramp up the production on the turmeric. A I, more? I think that's the you know that's the difference between what Homesteader Mark does. You know, he just keeps that deep moisture to it. So if I can do that, I mean, we get a lot of moisture during the summer, but we have periods where there's none. So I think if I can get regular, it'd be worth. Because I sold that. Wrights was buying that from me for 15 bucks a pound all winter. So I just gave him the last bit of that too. So that was great. Um, yeah, Wrights has been a really good thing too. I think I've done like five grand with them over the winter, so that's a good thing. And you know, they can have produce in their store that was picked an hour ago, and that's really rare. Cisco don't do that. No, they don't. Wow. So cut flowers have been strong. People are oh, around the corner. it's crazy good. I don't know if you have. I don't know if you noticed. So the snapdragons have been doing great. <laughs> and then I I transplanted a bunch of um, amaryllis. So there's the snapdragons, and they were late getting started, and that's that new bed, you know, with that brand new Nupa Richie compost. So that did pretty good. So and I have a little bit of infiltration, but I did some of the, what do you call that, uh, builder's paper? Okay, the brown and, paper. From and like doubled those. it, yeah. So, I, you know, there's definitely some stuff coming up through it, but, you know, I'm going to plant that with a cover crop of peanuts, um, and then mulch it good again. And dig out. See if you dig out the um, Bermuda, especially that's the one. If you can get that out, because most of the time it's going right into that new soil, so it's easy to get out. And then mulch it. You just have to fight that edge. You know, I just did that over there. Are we talking about just store-bought peanuts too? Yep. Wow. Raw peanuts from Publix. Okay. We'll see how it goes. I mean, I tried to. Source, uh -oh. I tried to sprout one, and I was just doing a test. It's there up. There he is. Okay. And they're a really interesting crop. I didn't realize how they work. You know, they put a flower up and then the flower touches the ground and the peanut goes down. They call it pegging. Really? Yeah, it's really cool. So we'll see. And it's a nitrogen fixer. So that's a new one for me too. Wow. Yeah. So and then the bees, ever since I started got them hives coming, I'm watching these bees and I'm thinking, boy, they could be working for me. I thought that was because everything was bolting. Yeah, see the thing, you know, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah, everything, I mean, they're loving all the brassicas going to flower. Okay, everything's off your big trellis in the center, huh? Yeah, and then Cindy gave me some cucumbers, so I'm gonna, um, I put them on there. I don't know if they'll fruit before I leave, probably not, but the, you know, the leeks turned out really good. Remember I did that? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna pull one of them up. So this is a little lush, this is more recently planted. We're still... Chinese broccoli is kicking good, and this is kind of amazing for April. Oh, big old head! Yeah, I mean that's a late planted broccoli. You know that Ooh. was that was probably planted oh, maybe end of February. Wow! You know it's quick. Arcadia is amazing. But yeah, the, it's that healthy soil. That's why it didn't bolt, huh? That's what I'm seeing. So remember. These are the leeks that, you know, when they were scallion size, I stuck a hole nine inches deep and stuck them in with about that much sticking out. Let's see if I can get them to pull. You know it's a good one if you need two hands, huh? Boom. Look at all that weight. Wow. You know, if I'd done it earlier, they'd be, you know, probably twice as big. So it's definitely worth growing. It seems like the, you know, the whole onion family, um, does really well on these soils. Everything I've done is, you know, the scallions and you know all the main onions I'm taking up there. I got a bunch of them growing. And I just finished the onions that I'd taken or started in Maine. I pulled them out. I must. I did good with that. I probably you know made six, seven hundred bucks out of that bed. It was a long crop, but it was worth it. We got mangoes for days over there. Oh man! Looks like you're gonna have a good set this year. Too bad I ain't gonna be here. Oh. But yeah, the squirrels or. Uh... Well, Jimmy will get some of them. I took some to Maine last year, but I stayed another two weeks longer, okay. you know, and they did ripen after three weeks, you know. They were delicious? Yeah. And boy, this sunflower, I love these, this variety. I've saved the seeds. I don't know what variety it was, but, you know, you cut the top with a big one and look at the multi. I mean, I'm going to get, you know, 20 sunflowers off that. Wow. And look at the bees are loving it. Next year you'll be working for me, guys. Hey. 
This means Jim's gonna have his own honey, huh? Yeah. Oh, another value-added item, huh? Yep, and then these, something new I tried. They are. Gladiolus. Really? Yeah, so, you know, they'll put out, and I'll, I'll cut that out. Should be able to get some, you know, cut flowers out of that before I leave, because they'll probably open. Um, Hi. Hello. How are you? Good, you? Good enough, good enough. Oh, I see figs over here, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it must be that afternoon shade over here, huh? Plus, it's, you know, it's a later planting, too. But, yeah, the afternoon shade definitely helps. Um, and then the amaryllis, they've been great. I divided those. And, the, I mean, there, you add that to a uh, bouquet, and that sells it right there itself. But yeah, this mango sat a lot. We'll see how many we can hold. Is this Kent? Uh, what's the other one? Carrie or Keat? Keat. Yeah. This is the Keat, okay. Whoa. Early and late's on here. Nice. We'll see it's a lot more than last year. We'll see how many it drops. Smell that compost pile? I do. I do. I love that smell. Oh, it's alive. Yeah. It's hard to believe how much it eats. Just it's just it down, you can huh? put it and it's gone. Hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. That's what I always see with the, the nutrient cycling you're missing by not having that happen in the garden. I Good think place. it's, I mean, that's the, that's the power of a sheet mulch. But, you know, I want the the good compost too so all this really nutrient dense leaves will go into that for my soil block mix oh jim this looks really great over here it's doing all right i mean they're starting to see you know that's all heat stress they just won't come up because it got too hot that's all the napa cabbage they're done huh yeah they just won't finish because they just you know they started burning compost yeah that's fine with me i mean this is all extra space i didn't even plant that for the last couple years um but yeah, and the Swiss chard's been doing great this year. New variety, you said? Yeah, well, there's a mix. That's the rhubarb, uh, red rhubarb one. It's a little more reddish, and that one's more chartreuse. That's that cherubel. See the one in the back that's more... Oh, a little purpley. more purplish, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, the scallions have been doing great. Say, oh, that whole onion family does good on these soils. Maria looks great. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of butchered that down, got rid of, because that had like multi-sprouts and took all that and dried that, taking that to Maine. Oh, you are. Yeah. You didn't even offer that at the market, huh? Not enough? No, it's for, you know, Alexander's making that tea. It's awesome. Jim, they keep asking. You ever selling Big Red? Never. 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 Don't Never. ask. They're going to bury me in it. <laughs> so this is a little, so I just finished mulching today. I don't know, you can see the line. And if you look down, so I broadcast, these are the black eyed peas that came from Publix. Um, and so they, I just broadcast them through here, mulched over and watered it in. And then, you know, because I'm trying to get out of here quick, I'm going to stagger my plant. Usually I get everything almost done and then start putting the sweet potato slips in. But um, this year I'm just going to, I can plant this tomorrow. You know, after I get, well, probably not tomorrow because I'll have a long day, but... Wednesday, um, and I will, I'll just be able to pull slips up out of the garden that have already sprouted. So this is a late planting of beets. So that's a like March, that's only like maybe 40 days ago. And people would say, oh, you can't plant beets that late. I'm gonna get a bunch of beets out of that. Wow. Whoa, you got another fruiting mango? Yeah. That is awesome. And then that's the one I chopped. Is this a different variety? That's the one that never fruited. Wow. And it was, uh, so I just was going to chop it. I should graft it, but. Jim, you're breaking all your rules. What's well, going I on think here? this is worth it for the potential, you know, to have some good turmeric. If I could get, you know, triple my, um, and it's, you know, it's all here. That was just the timer I already had, you know, maybe 50 bucks in pipe and some heads. So I think it will be worth it. And I'll be interesting because I'll be able to see, I've got some, what's that, Roselle that sprouted. And it sprouted, because I guess because of the day length right now, it's actually got flowers on it really? at this hall. It's a little early for that. Yeah, but wow. it sprouted from the ones that fell on the ground from this fall. Um, so I'm gonna transplant them and put them in there, get a little water and then see how much better the sweet potato yield is right on that edge. And then if it is good, maybe it'd be good, yeah, because these are where my slips are starting. Oh. I, made a, I made a trench. You had potatoes to start them? Yeah, okay. I had a bunch of uglies. Okay. Yeah. You saved them? Yeah. And then those are all onions that are going to Maine. Them will probably go in the mail because they're getting big. 
You're gonna ship them up before you even leave? Yeah, because I nice. got a whole other like 5,000 smaller that'll be ready, uh, be about that big in four weeks. All right, Jim's got a zone one. Zone one. Five heads running. And there's that amaryllis. Oh, they are party. Is that going to go in your cut flower mix? Yep, I'll be cutting that after you leave. Is that tonight? Yeah. Are you still going to work today, Jim? Yeah, I've noticed that if you cut your flowers in the evening and let them sit in water overnight, they last. People are telling me the mochas are lasting two weeks. Really? Yeah, and they're only paying five bucks. But this has been a great crop. Celery. People are just raving about the taste because it's so much intensely flavored compared to the... And it might be the salt, too. You remember Mehmet? Exactly. Uh, that two seeds in a pod seed company? Okay. From Turkey? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he moved to uh, somewhere in Morgantown, West Virginia or whatever. But he'd given me some eggplant seeds like three years ago and I saved it and they sprouted. Um, so we'll see. That's going to be some kind of Turkish. I don't even know the name. And then this is one I already had the name of. And, you know, they're doing great. I mean, that's... You know, I'll be eggplants on them already? Yeah, I'll be picking those before I leave. Nice. And this is nematode infested soil. Because I just pulled them charred out of there. It was so full of nematodes. But it was still producing charred. What I've yeah. seen, I've really changed my attitude on, or my view of how nematodes work. So they, you know, start affecting a plant right away. With, but with good soils, the plant produces and produces. And then as it gets a certain age, it can't quite keep up anymore. And then they start to go into wilt all the time. Because like if I pull this swish chard, Da -da! Is that a pearl necklace? What is that? Isn't that amazing? Whoa! But, you know, for the first, so this is was planted in October. I've got, you know, I don't know, maybe 10 bunches off this plant before it started going into decline. Wow. So, and there's a tomato right next to it, still producing. But the thing I'm seeing about these winter tomatoes is they've been in so long. So they're tired too because they've got the nematode pressure. Mm. Whereas if you had the new ones in that you'd planted, you know, in February, if we didn't get a frost, they'd be rocking and it'd be longer before they'd get tired. So plant another batch or something. Yeah, yeah, I would, but you know, I'm not going to be here. That's what I did last year with the COVID coming. Um, but I'll, st or if we have a warm winter, you know, then I'd do better. But you know, I probably made, I don't know, five or six hundred dollars on those tomatoes and maybe another couple hundred before I leave. That's a new one. I'm having a hard time selling them. These are a little smaller. But. Da -da. Looks like a little man running. <laughs> no, the daikons. Okay. You know, so I've been throwing them in the pick of the garden, but they're going, what do we do with this? You gotta Say, give them a recipe. Kimchi, kimchi, do kimchi. But um, that's 40 days to that. So, you know, I mix that in here. There was carrots in here previous, you know, and I got, so I got it, you know, and I put a little more carrots in here. I probably won't get those to finish, but the last other one I did, I will. You replant them again next year? Um, no. No. They weren't popular enough? No. Okay. No, I don't think so. Unless I, yeah, I just haven't got a niche market crop, like if I had an Asian, you know, market or something like that, which something I should probably explore, but. You know, people are coming out of the woodwork. I sell almost everything and, you know, sell the stuff people want. Then turn them on to new stuff, but if they don't like it, then they don't like it. Yeah. Most of those are Campari. That's been the best overall. And then this is a Juliet. You know, it's been nice, but they'll be twice as big in Maine. So I got so spoiled. I'm like, what the heck is that? But in the Sun Gold, same thing. They'll be twice as big in Maine. But, you know, if people are happy to have like, a little sweet treat. Um, kind of better release. Uh, they're loquat tomatoes. Loquat tomato. Ooh, champagne variety? Yeah. So when I got up to Maine, when we pulled in the driveway, um, one of the goats was having a baby. Oh, God. Right? Right in the middle of labor, and I had a bunch of loquats that um, Yamaya was eating, so we walked out there and gave her a couple as she was giving birth, so the baby's called loquat. Oh, really? It's a girl, so we'll keep that one, too. Nice. I like it. You got your uh, high-tech harvester there, Jim? You know it. Oh! Gotta go down to the flower farm. Alright. You know how many times I walked up and down the street with a bin like this? Many a year. It's been 12 at least. And then we got a big dahlia. They've been a good time.
What are we going to do? Check on your neighbor's uh, mulberry? Yeah, the best place to have a mulberry is at your neighbor. <laughs> oh. oh, don't mind if I do. I remember when I got, I just got had a, a stink bugger. Oh, that's a good size mulberry. Wow. I mean, ooh. and just prolific and man. Oh, jeez, Jim. Are you bringing these to market? Yeah, tomorrow I'll take some. Tomorrow, really? Yeah, I'll pick. You know, for half hour. I, half ten, hour, I get ten quarts. Ten quarts in a half, half hour? hour. Wow. That's amazing. Come on. Oh my gosh. Might have to name this one Jim's Best. We don't know what it is. Probably Tyson though. That's what I'm thinking. Because mm. sometimes there'll be a little right there. A little a extra mulberry. Mm. Ooh. You guys know I eat some mulberries. Oh! I butchered it for like two years in a row, so I hadn't picked for a while. And I went in here. I just remembered. I could just. Like in an hour, I could pick 20 quarts. Wow. The thing is, I was, I learned, you'd, you know, I pick them in the yogurt containers, only fill them three quarters full because they start to smush them. If you get any taller. Yeah. The weight of the mulberry? Mm. So I started and then I even I'm selling them at half pints instead of pints for the same reason. Mm. So instead of doing $5 a pint, I'm doing $3 a half pint. Our so they don't genius. smush, yeah. Whoa, same hand from mulberries. Mm. Oh, if you pick them in the afternoon, they just seem to last a lot longer. Nice and cool out still, too. Yeah. If the sun's intensity is different, and the plants feel that, I know they do. It's called Lavateria, but it was not supposed to be white. It was supposed to be purple. Okay. But at least it bloomed. We'll take it. Yeah. Add to the... Bouquet. What? Sit. You scared of the camera? Seriously? Oh, Whoa, you cut these for the bouquet? Yeah. Okay. A little greenery I always help. You film this and people will think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, oh. And this is that crowd of a uh, Lula. Got the disease three times, but keeps coming back. This year it had like 500 fruit on it. Can't kill it, huh? Nope. These were seeds? Yep. They're so tall. And then that um, calendula is gorgeous too. Oh, the one with the, the orange? You should see how big some of them were getting. And now they're petering out, but God, they're gorgeous. So I'm saving seeds on that one. I'm in the bachelor buttons. I'm, I'm learning which ones are good and which ones aren't. They, I mean, the foliage is just terrible on them. In Maine, they're weed. Wow, I didn't see those yellow ones. <laughs> yeah, that's, they make nice cut flowers too, the dill flowers. They're beautiful. I can't believe a coal in them guys sell those for. I think they're getting five bucks a piece. Five dollars per flower? Yep, or two for seven. Well, they're proud of these guys, huh? Wow. So maybe one more video before you go? Sure, we got plenty of time to do that. Did I hear you might even let me come up to Maine this year? Yes. Oh. Come on up for blueberry season. They've been asking for a long time for this one. Yeah, I got greenhouses up there. There'll be some, there's definitely some new techniques going in up there. So we haven't gotten any scythe action in a minute either. Right. All right. Thanks, Jim. Whoop, whoop. Let's go.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that follow up with Jim, everyone's favorite farmer. Um, this place is actually looking pretty good for the time of year, cut flowers, still bringing a lot to market. You heard him, he just had his best day ever. Um, so I'll be sure to get back here one more time before he leaves, kind of give you guys just a little bit more of a run through what's going on, when he's leaving, when he's coming back, and I'm definitely gonna be planning that trip to Maine. So if you guys enjoyed that video, this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, maybe please go ahead and do so. Most importantly, we pound dirt around here.